Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. Uh, wanted to follow up on the S&P since uh, market's still very, very active. Um, before I get into that, uh, want to I know there's some new subscribers. Want to make sure you understand. Um, I'm going to try and continue to update uh, my thoughts on where the S&P is and what's happening with it. Um, I, have, I do videos on Tuesdays and Friday mornings, and um, a lot of the time I'm spent. I, if you go back through my videos, I do a lot of work on uh, multiple time frame analysis as well as MACD and ADX and how to use those in multiple time frames as well. Uh, so hopefully you can get something out of that if you go back through. I'm also going to put the link to my book uh, in the comment area below. Um, so invest like a pro. So take a take a look at that as well. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at the uh, S and P chart. And what I'm going to do here, I am going to I'm going to talk about the uh, the S and P. Um, I'm also going to show a few uh, trades set up in the S&P, and then I'm going to show uh, actually a trade that was done by one of the subscribers that uh, I thought was a good example of uh, what we're trying to do here. So that's the goal here. I'm going to try and do all that in 10 minutes. So uh, I'm going to get to it here. Uh, the monthly chart of the S&P is on the left. Uh, weekly is on the right. I always like to start with the higher time frame. I frame this out. Uh, uh, just to bring us up to speed, we undercut the 38% retracement in the 2018 bottom and got a pretty good reversal, left a, a lot of people behind on this monthly chart with the big stem. That's what we talked about in the last video. And we've gotten some more follow through. So if we go back to what we were talking about last video, um, I drew in the Fib grid and I was suggesting that the because we were working our way through this 38% retracement, that odds were pretty good. We're going to work our way up to the 50% area. Um, I've actually framed out over on the left chart, the, the, the price resistance zone, which I had outlined, which is somewhere in the 2750 to 2850. And we're basically closing, we close the week at right at, um, the, um, 50% retracement and pretty much smack right in the middle of this resistance zone. Now, I mean, I, I think you should know, I, I've, as I've mentioned in a lot of videos, as my other older subscribers would say, I, I don't really look to just short just because we're hitting resistance. You got to look for signals. You have to look for momentum uh, starting to reverse. Um, I use a pattern I like to look for on a smaller time frame, a one, two, three uh, reversal in the trend. And I, I would be looking or there would be signs of momentum divergence, either one of those. If you got that, then I'd start to feel like I'd want to be more aggressive to get maybe get back on the short side. But right now um, we've made a pretty good move. And if you look at the weekly bar, it didn't close right at the high, but it closed pretty strong. It was a it was really a strong week. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there could continue to be some, uh, upside follow through, uh, the 50% retracement is a pretty good barometer. If we can push through that, um, the, in fact, the, the way I would look at it, the farther you push to the upside, um, I think the, the higher, the probability that we've made a very, very significant low down here. And, and it's a lot easier to defend, to defend, the farther you push off that low. But the more you push off of it, the more of a sign that, you know, you've got some pretty good strength underneath. Now, I mean, I don't want to uh, minimize the fact that we've got some pretty strong resistance up above 3000. So it, it's very possible based on the way this is playing out that, you know, we could maybe fiddle around in here in the short term, but maybe we try and push up towards 3000 before it really starts to roll over again. Um, I'm not, I don't really like to predict. I like to take, I like to do analysis, start from the higher time frame, work my way down. And we're going to do that here right now. Um, I'd rather not predict. I'd rather look for high probability areas and then look for signals from there. So um, I'm going to switch this to a uh, daily chart. And actually, I'm going to switch to daily over here hourly on this side. Um, the last time I had talked about the fact that we broke this downtrend line, uh, made a pretty strong move, pulled back to the 38 to 50% retracement, and then took out this high. And that really qualified as a one, two, three change in trend. So we're now in an uptrend here uh, to the upside. And I, I think, you know, I would probably be watching this trend line now and looking for signs that, uh, you know, a trend line break. Now, we're kind of far away from that. If you wanted to, I guess you could be more aggressive and look at this trend line. Um, I, 
you know, it, it's not a bad idea in this instance because we're right at the 50% retracement. But I think what we're going to still need to do is break this 18 MA. Uh, very important line on the hourly chart. I'd, I'd like to see that broken. And then if we rally back underneath it, um, the 10 minute chart is going to look uh, pretty ugly at that point, probably giving us one of our sell signals. So um, th th I think that's how I'd be looking at it right now. If you're real aggressive, you'd probably be looking for a one, two, three change in trend off of this 50% retracement. And what we're going to need to do for that is come down, break this 18 MA preferably, and then work our way up and test this high and fail. And if we do that, three part three of a change in trend would be taking out this low. But I am going to be looking at the two right here. And I'm if we get this set up, if this thing comes down and breaks the 18 MA um, and then rallies back up and, you know, it might make a test, a full test of the high or it might make a lower high like this. I'm going to be down on a 10 minute chart looking for one of the sell signals for my book. And, and there's several ways it could play out. Uh, it'll probably be like a buy signal that fails um, or it could be a one, two, three change in trend on the 10 minute. So um, I, I'm a big fan of, of shorting the secondary rally after a trend line break. Um, but I want to go down to a, sh a smaller time frame to do it. And I'm going to give you an example of this on the long side. I'm going to take this stuff out real quick. Um, and I wanted to show you this pullback here, right here, uh, on the uh, hourly chart. And let's go, I'm going to clear this out. Let's go and see what happened on the 10 minutes. So that's, let's just highlight where that was. That was right in here. And if you notice what happened, we came down and we broke the trend line. There was a trend line in place that was broken. And then we rallied up and we came back and tested the low. So that's the two. And then three would be taking out this peak up here on the 10 minute. And I would probably be looking to buy the two, but I, instead of going down to a two minute, I'm gonna use MACD in this instance. And I want to be getting long as this is crossing over, which would be somewhere right in this zone, right as it's getting back above the 18 MA on the 10 minute. So hope this makes sense to you. You made a really strong move to the upside. Look at the uh, ADX. ADX making a really powerful move. And then it pulled back. And on the pullback, um, you're looking at the lower time frame for entry, and we're looking for a one, two, three change in trend. And notice how you came in the zone and then came out of the zone and then turned back up. And as soon as the MACD crossed over, that was sort of your trigger point to get in for this trading move to the upside, which, as I mentioned last time, the bias was to the upside and we we're looking to a move, uh, for a move up to 2800. And we basically got that. So that would have been how you would have framed out that trade. Um, I'm going to do one other thing I want to show uh, off this, uh, this, uh, setup and I'm going to do a daily on the left and an hourly on the right. This is carnival cruise. It's gotten murdered and it's really had a hard time here. It rallied up. And one of the subscribers is actually a relative. Uh, uh, told me that he did a trade, uh, based off of a lot of the things we've been talking about. So let's just take a quick look at this. Uh, market ferociously to the downside, but then rallies up to the 18 and, you know, makes a move to the downside. And look at what the MACD did. This was in the video I mentioned last time where we, we come down in price, uh, but the MACD lines are going the other way. But one thing I talk about a lot in, I, in a lot of the videos that I've done is the pinch play. And if you notice the MACD line is pinching in towards its signal line, but it doesn't break it. This is a pretty powerful signal to be on the lookout for, especially when price actually comes down and takes out this low. So 
we've got a situation where price rallies up and comes back down and makes a minor new low, but the MACD is making a significantly higher low. And not only that, the MACD line is holding its signal. That is what I call a divergent pinch. I've done a few videos on it. Um, it's something to be on the lookout for. Uh, one of the, the subscriber I mentioned, he actually bought it on this low day, uh, right about a little above eight bucks. Um, and, you know, I, I, he told me he took uh, partial profits at like 12. So I mean, we're talking about a 50% move in about two to three days. So I was really pleased to see he took advantage of that. It was a very aggressive play. Um, one thing I thought I'd mention, if we want to look at multiple time frames, um, the entry coincided really nicely. Actually, I'm going to take this off really nicely uh, with the uh, break of the signal line to the upside. So that was about the area where he got in based off of the fact that the daily was coming in and uh, forming a divergent pinch. And then MACD crosses over and offers a really good confirming signal where you could have put a stop in right at the low, which is very, very tight risk and had, uh, you know, significant upside. So anyway, uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, uh, you know, going back to the S&P, make sure when you're looking at this, you don't just pick a spot. Don't guess. Um, you know, we're, we're in this zone right near the uh, 18, I mean, the 40 MA. Um, but this is the zone where we'd be looking for some type of a reversal. But we do need to see uh, some trigger signs. OK, uh, please subscribe, hit the uh, like button and we'll talk to you soon.